Ukraine. As each day goes by, there seems to be more and more support for the frontline heroes in the virus fight. Take a look at this. In Egypt, the Great Pyramid of Giza lit up with messages of appreciation and solidarity, urging everyone to stay home, stay safe. Uh, in New York, the famous Empire State Building flashed red and white to resemble the lights on the top of an ambulance. 179 countries have cases of COVID-19. More than 800,000 people have been infected now. The death toll is approaching 40,000 people, but more than 172,000 have now recovered. Now, we're all being told to stay at home to stop the spread of coronavirus, but there are a handful of exceptions. You can leave your home to shop for food and other essential items, work if you can't work from home, attending school or an educational institution, get medical care and do exercise, but only if the exercise is done alone or with just one other person. The New South Wales government has a list which would excuse somebody being outside. It includes fleeing an unsafe home to avoid injury or illness, dealing with an emergency or on compassionate grounds. You can leave your home to provide care or help to a vulnerable person or to take your child to childcare. You're allowed to leave home to attend a wedding adhering to the five person limit or to attend a funeral adhering to a 10 person limit. Moving house or moving between two places of residence is also excused and fulfilling shared parental arrangements. The government says those conditions should not change and children can move between homes. You can leave home to fulfil legal obligations or donate blood, also to access support services such as Centrelink and mental health services. And if you're a priest, minister or member of a religious order, you can leave home to go to a place of worship or to provide pastoral care. Now, police are enforcing the stay-at-home rules. If you break them, you could get a serious fine. In New South Wales, it's an on-the-spot fine of $1,000 for individuals. In Victoria, it's a $1,600 fine for breaching social distancing rules. Queenslanders face a $1,300 fine for unnecessarily leaving home. And in WA, there's an on-the-spot fine of $1,000 for those who disobey self-isolation. Let's go live to our team of reporters now. First to Samantha Brett in Sydney. Backpackers have been warned over flouting social distancing rules. Yeah, Nat, good morning. It seems like backpackers simply aren't heeding the warnings. Last night, a huge group was found having a massive party on the roof of their hostel. Uh, luckily, New South Wales police were very quickly on the scene. They were able to break that up. But we just heard from the New South Wales Premier, Gladys Berejiklian. Uh, there has been an increase in the number of cases across the state overnight, 150 new cases. There is a concern that a group of backpackers is spreading the virus. Here is some of what the Premier had to say. Today our health authorities are focusing on those areas where there has been outbreaks or clusters and ensuring there is more testing done in those areas. We have to maintain our vigilance. We can't let our foot off the pedal. We can't relax. Now, in some breaking news, the government has just announced an incredible initiative, a retooling initiative for emergency medical supplies. They are now in short supply right across New South Wales. So this really is a call to arms for any businesses who make things such as hand sanitizer, hand wash, uh, paper towels or toilet paper. They are being urged to go onto the government website and to register there and hopefully they can help out the government in this case. Uh, we also heard from the Premier that they will be upping testing. So there is going to be a pop-up clinic here in Bondi Beach. Anyone with symptoms is being urged to get tested. Nat? Bianca Stone is at police headquarters in Brisbane. A brothel has received the first fine in Queensland. Nat, good morning. Police allege it was an illegal brothel and police have come down very hard on the owner. They have slapped her with a big fine. Detectives doing, comp doing compliance checks went to the Lavender Massage and Spa on Monday. They found they were still offering services. The 37-year-old owner was fined $6,600. Her 25-year-old employee was given an on-the-spot fine of $1,300. Both will now need to face court on prostitution charges as well. Police 
Police have warned they will be checking compliance. 40,000 people here in Queensland have been issued with those quarantine requirements, so they will be going door to door and also calling them. Since the coronavirus crisis began here in Queensland, crime has actually dropped, but concerningly, domestic violence has increased. Nat? Tamara Bow is at Brisbane Airport. Two Border Force officers have now returned positive tests. They have, Nat, so obviously a very nervous wait ahead for any passengers or staff members who may have come into direct contact with these two Border Force officers. We understand one is from New South Wales, the other is located here in Queensland. Uh, health, uh, Queensland health officers as well as New South Wales health officials are currently offering advice and assistance to those two officers. And they're also now faced with that daunting task of contact tracing, which is a very, very big job in their roles as Border force operators. They could be stationed at seaports and airports right around the country. They check baggage, they check a cargo. They also uh, clear any passengers or staff members who are arriving in Australia here as well. So as you can imagine, Nat, there's every chance on any given day in their role, they can come into contact with large groups of people. Andrea Nicholas is at Adelaide Airport this morning. A group of Qantas staff have now tested positive. That's right, Nat. Six baggage handlers have contracted COVID-19 in a worrying cluster here at Adelaide Airport. It threw things into chaos yesterday with seven flights in and out of Adelaide cancelled, including one that was on its way from Sydney that had to be turned around. That's because there was no one here to load or unload the bags. These six baggage handlers had shared an area with up to 100 others who have gone into quarantine until SA Health can do that contact tracing. Now, the concern here is health authorities still aren't sure how these baggage handlers contracted the virus. We do know COVID-19 can survive on some service surfaces for several hours and that sparked fears about contamination of luggage. People who've been at the airport in the past day or so are being urged to disinfect their bags. They're being urged to watch out for any symptoms in case they too may have contracted the virus. And while today flights have resumed here at Adelaide Airport, it's blocked off the terminal so that only staff and passengers with boarding passes can now enter. Nat? Olivia Leming is in Canberra where the government has announced a landmark deal to give our hospitals a boost. It is partnering with private hospitals. Olivia. Yeah, so not only will private hospitals be able to remain open, many had feared they would have to close as a result of this ban on elective surgery, but it means their facilities will be able to be used to treat what we're expecting to be a surge in COVID-19 patients. More than 100,000 doctors and nurses and about 30,000 private hospital beds will be moved to the public system, effectively doubling the number of intensive care unit beds uh, to more than 4,400, costing the federal government about $1.3 billion. Here's how the association representing the uh, private hospital sector responded this morning. Things like cardiac surgery, uh, cancer treatment, half of all chemotherapy currently takes place in private hospitals inpatient mental health care. These aren't things you can push off for six months. So some of that will continue in, in private hospitals. But for those who are just reliant on elective surgery, um, they will be doing something different. Now, in further good news, a new flu vaccine is now available in Australia. It will be free for anyone over the age of 65. They are strongly urged to get this as well uh, for pregnant women, Indigenous Australians and children under the age of five. Now, it, of course, will not prevent anyone uh, getting coronavirus, uh, but it will hopefully stop that dangerous double up of uh, people contracting coronavirus and the flu together at the same time and ease the burden, that pressure on our hospital system. Nathan Templeton is in Melbourne. You've got updated numbers now on how many businesses have applied to the new job seeker. Yes, now desperate business owners are rushing to access this money. We've got some uh, fresh numbers from the Treasurer's office. 370,000 Australian businesses have now applied for this JobKeeper funding, which will provide $1,500 per fortnight for every worker that employers are able to keep in a job. It's obviously a massive outlay from the federal government, uh, but economist Chris Richardson from Deloitte told Koshy a little earlier he thinks this is a smart long-term investment for the country. 
Last week, um, Australia probably lost a million jobs. Uh, and that new package buys back comfortably more than half of them. And that trade-off, right, we're spending money to save jobs, uh, is an incredibly important thing to do right now. Now, eventually, it's hoped that that JobKeeper money might save up to six million jobs uh, and also keep some businesses afloat. Now and David, why, what is it? A gun shop in Melbourne? The sale of guns and ammunition has now been banned. That's right, Nat, and these gun shop owners, well, they're not too happy about it. In fact, many are now planning on taking this fight up to the state government over this decision to temporarily suspend the sale of guns, ammunition and those gun permits as well. Many of these small business owners say they are now facing financial ruin. I think it's a very bad idea for the simple reason that if you wanted to find a more trustworthy and law-abiding cohort of society, um, all you've got to do is look for the uh, law-abiding shooters. To say that because we want to buy a firearm or own a firearm legally, that we are likely to perpetrate domestic violence, the facts just don't stand up. Now, the state government's concern is that some of these weapons and ammunition had actually been uh, stockpiled and there was a risk that it could fall into the wrong hands. But recreational shooters say they are among the most trustworthy in the community and they are now preparing a court case. OK, thanks, everyone. Here's Koshi. Now, the number of coronavirus cases and deaths is still spiking across the US and Europe, with several countries recording their worst ever daily death tolls. Let's go live to our correspondents. First to 7 News US Bureau Chief Ash Mullaney, who's outside the White House. Ash, the death toll in the US has now surpassed China. It has, Koshin. We've looked on with horror at these numbers coming out of Italy. Well, today here in the US, we have just recorded more than 700 deaths in a single day. That is just a staggering figure and we are still a couple of weeks away from the apex. Of course, the big concern is still New York as the epicentre. And today we have seen another landmark, uh, Flushing Meadows, the home of the US Open, transformed into another field hospital. These tennis courts symbolize what we're all going through right now. We'd all like to go back to the times when things are normal and people are out here playing tennis. But we also know that this crisis will not go on forever. It will be very intense, but thank God it will be brief. Andrew, Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, issued another stark warning. He's urging people to take this seriously. His brother, Chris Cuomo, who's actually an anchor on CNN, has just been diagnosed positive wow. with COVID-19. So saying that this is the ultimate yep. equaliser. It doesn't matter how famous or rich you are. No one is immune from this virus, Koshi. Uh, Ash, this is incredible because yesterday you were showing us that big Navy hospital ship going into New York. A field hospital in Central Park and now Flushing Meadow. Yeah, it's staggering, isn't it? Most of those beds, so 350 beds uh, on those tennis courts, uh, they'll be used for mostly non-coronavirus victims. But as wow. you mentioned, seeing Central Park turned into a field hospital, looking like a war zone, uh, it's just a surreal moment. And it is here at the White Houses too, Koshi. I mean, there's normally 90 full-time staff. It's normally buzzing around the White House. And we have seen that this is um, things are really quiet around here. They're operating on, on skeleton staff here mm. as well. Seven News Europe Bureau Chief Hugh Whitfeld is in London. Hugh, the numbers are skyrocketing in the UK and in Europe. That's some more pretty shocking figures overnight. In Spain, they thought they were on the right track in terms of the curve and the trends that they were seeing. But unfortunately, Spain has just recorded it once again its deadliest day of this crisis. 849 people killed by the virus in 24 hours. That brings the death toll there to 8,189. More bad news in France, another uh, country to record its deadliest day, 499 deaths in one day. In Belgium, a 12-year-old uh, girl has become the youngest person in Europe to die from coronavirus. Here in Britain, confirmation, a 13-year-old boy has died from coronavirus. Here in London, as Britain too recorded its deadliest day of the crisis so far, 381 people killed in 24 hours. That brings the death toll to close to 1,800 here. As the government battles to get enough personal protective equipment into hospitals to make sure that nurses and doctors themselves aren't getting 
getting sick. Boris Johnson is leading the government from self-isolation. He led a cabinet meeting today, the first time that a cabinet meeting has been held in Britain where none of the cabinet ministers were actually in the cabinet room. The whole thing was done via video link. In Moscow, the doctor who showed President Vladimir Putin through uh, one Moscow hospital's preparation for coronavirus, he has tested positive. Nah. OK, thank you both. See, a few weeks ago we were just saying, look at the pictures out of Italy. Yeah. Now it's Spain, UK, France, they're sort all Sort of falling. going right around that northern hemisphere, yeah. isn't it? what a worry. All right.